دمر كل ساحر وساحرة اللهم دمر السحرة ومن شايعهم ومن الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيق وامتنان وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد It's obligatory to be content and accept the decree of Allah Rabbul Izzah Looking to quench your thirst with the dirty water is a foundation of evil and one will be frantic and relentless and depressed Today in the world there's a lot of people who look to quench their thirst with the dirty water Today I'm going to bring for you a story of two brothers two cousins who love each other so much it begins one is well educated having masters degrees after degrees and one is absolutely not educated but his main job is business he's engaged in business the one who is well educated nothing he's got degrees after degrees but nothing goes for him the one who is not educated allah has blessed him he's got shops massive shop and his business is making money he's got ha who's he's got car he's making money now the one who's got degrees start looking at himself and say look at me i've got certificate i'm well educated and i got nothing but this man who's not is my cousin who's not educated things are going very nice for him he's got a very nice house very beautiful wife very beautiful shop and business running fast for him everywhere he touches money he makes everywhere i touch nothing shaitan slowly penetrating him and slowly slowly hasad is start creeping in hasad and hatred now when these two combined the person does not see any good he is just wants to do evil so hasad went and hatred creeped in now i start thinking what do i need to do i need to do something about this one of the thing is the brother the one who everything goes fine for him he is okay with the guy and in fact He even welcomes the guy to the shop he gives leave the shop to him and he goes and say he sell it for me he goes and travels and do business here and there and comes back but whenever he comes back for example he leaves the shops for him for 20 minutes and he goes back and comes back and when he comes back nothing is sold there the guy what he does is whoever comes to the shop if the if there's a pen is for one pound he sells it for five pound so the people don't buy if there's a can of coke for one pound he sells it for 150 so the people don't buy anything from that shop and the and the shop it was given to him for only 20 minute to 30 minute one hour the brother went to look for more stuff to bring in the house or more to more business dealings and he comes back and he say what happened what did you make what did he says nothing people just don't come here and the guy say it's it's not normal oh, it could be business it's fine but normally this time i make such such amount was his news is his business so he say oh it could be business he say alhamdulillah fine and he goes cut his own with his shop the guy left one of the days he decided he wants to travel and he calls his cousin he says i need you to hold tight for my shop and i'm traveling for two weeks i'm going to bring more stock in my shop he says fine i'll look for it after your shop your shop is my shop i'll look after it don't worry about it uh, you're my cousin you're my brother and the guy troubles the guy comes back to the shops every morning he doesn't sell anything same more trend when somebody comes when somebody wants a t-shirt when somebody wants sugar the sugar if it's one pound it'll be five pounds if the chocolate bar is 50 pence it'll be 3 pound so no one is buying anything for 2 3 weeks 
whatever he's selling is very, very minimum. The brother comes back. When he comes back, he saw his shop going absolutely down, nearly on the brink of closing. He said, what happened? He says, nobody buys anything from it. He goes and asks his neighbor's shops, say, Alhamdulillah, business as usual, no boost in here. And he says, this is not normal, but he didn't make of anything. He just carries on with this. Normal life, he says, oh, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's all right. So he took the keys and he carries on with his business. Within five to six days, he made double the amount where he, the three weeks was away, double. The, his cousin got shocked. It is Allah who is rewarding this fella. It is Allah who is making things easy because there is somebody who is envying. Remember when some, there is someone who is envying you, Allah will make it easy for you. And that person will be difficult for him. He will live a life which is unhappy life. Because remember, there is low life people out there. Brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, who you mentioned cousins, there is low life out there who envies you. I'm telling you this, they will be no, they don't sleep because you are being blessed. I have seen it and this is a story I'm narrating to you. The brother now, he's thinking what is happening man? This guy man, I can't be him. What do I need to do? He decides the shaitan comes and tells him, listen, go and sort him out. Go to a magician. He goes to a magician and he speaks to the magician. And he says, listen, I need that shop. Nobody goes to that shop. I need that business dead. And the magician does whatever he does. He gives him. And he goes in the shop. He walks slowly, comes from a magician. He goes to his cousin. How are you? You good? Yeah. And when he entered the shop, his cousin was over the phone talking to somebody else. Another business dealings. So he decides to wait. When he finished the phone, he said, man, it was, alhamdulillah, it was good that you were here. I got a call, business dealings. So inshallah, I hold my phone, my shop for 20 minutes. But he came there to plant. To plant what? Magic. So Allah made the road easy for him. So the brother leaves the shop and the guy stays there with his magic. He sprinkles his magic everywhere. After one hour, the brother comes back. He comes back straight away. The magic takes effect straight away. He says, I'm feeling tired. I can't stand here. I don't know what's going on with me. I'm just feeling tired. I just need to go home. I'm going to close the shop. The, brother, the other one knew what he was doing. He said, okay, let's close it. He closed the shop and he goes home. And he stays home. The first day, the second day, the third day, shop is closed. The fourth day, shop is closed. His wife is worried and she calls the brother. Now this cousin had an eye on the business and had an eye on the wife of the brother. When she called, she, he was over the moon. I need your help. He says, how can I help? Say, my husband is dead bound. He's always in the bed. He can't move. I need you to open the shop and run the shop. He said, I will do that. He took the keys and goes to the shop. The minute he enters the shop, he start feeling the symptoms of the magic. He start feeling the heart beating fast, sweating and he can't feel comfortable. He can't relax in there. He, he just wants to run away from the shop. He removed the shirts. He, he puts water on his body, but he's, he's not comfortable in that shop. He runs out of the shop, closes the shop, and goes to the magician. He say, what have you done? I told you, not me. Oh, not him alone, not the shop. Him alone just did destroy him, kill him. This is the length he was going to kill so he can get the shop and he can get the wife. The magician does whatever he does, he gives him. He goes back to the shop and sprinkle. In half an hour, he says the man is back, the owner of the shop, back. 
sit talking on the phone, laughing and joking. And he's thinking, what is happening? What is happening? Allah says, وَلَا يُفْلِحُ السَّاحِرُ حَيْثُ أَتَى Magician will never be successful. Whatever they do, it will never be successful. So, he looks at him. And he looks at him. This guy, he was hit by magic. But now he's better. He's sure. And the people are start coming in the shop. And the envious fellow, the cousin, he's dying inside, inside the shop. And he's looking. The business is going perfect. And he runs out and he goes, boom, back to this magician. He never stops. Always go back, always. Whoever does magic, whoever is engaged in magic, the, the evil people, will always go back and back and back until they see the individual is finished. So he goes back now. He said, listen, I didn't tell you to wake that guy up from the dead. I want him finished so I can take the shop. But he never told him is the shop. But in his mind, I need the shop and I need the, the wife of the brother. So the magician does whatever he does. He gives him and he puts it in his pocket. Go and do it and go and chuck it in the shop. So he goes slowly, 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 slowly on the way. While he's rich, he's approaching the shop and he's reaching the shop. He start looking for the magic. The magic is not there. So whatever the magician has gave him is was water and I don't know what. Allah knows best. Something wet. So what happened is he busted in the pocket and he sprinkled all the way to his legs. So he start looking for it and start touching his legs. His legs are feeling numb and he's becoming like a stone. And he's touching one part of it is becoming like a stone. And he touched the other part. He's soft and he starts thinking, what is going on with me? Innahum yakiduna kaidu wa akidu kaidu. Allah says. Hey, they plan and plot, but Allah is planning as well. While he's feeling his leg numb and dying, going towards the shop, his conscious comes back. When his conscious comes back, he runs to the masjid to go and repent. While making a woo, his leg is still becoming numb and hard. He remembers, I need to go back to the magician. So he goes back to the magician and the magician does some ma magic on his leg and tell him, go sleep tomorrow when you wake up. You'll be alright. So he wakes up, one leg dead. He wakes up in the morning, one leg dead. The leg which the magic was busted in his leg. Allah is the great planner. Remember this, whoever is wants to do evil to you, he will never be successful. Particularly wants to harm believing men and women. He will never be successful. Everything will turn back towards them or him or her. Now he wakes up in the morning and realizes his conscience comes back. His leg is dead. What can I do now? He goes and makes wudu and repents to Allah and makes toba was Allah, Rabbul Izza. Sincere repentance and repents and repents and he goes back to his cousin and narrates to his cousin and tells him, listen, I need you to forgive me. My leg is dead and I need you to make dua for me. Look at this man. This man was willing to kill that man. This man was willing to destroy that man and take his wealth and take his wife which is Allah has blessed these two things to the Azaman. Now Allah has humiliated him. He goes back and asks to be forgiven. So he says, I need you to forgive me. My leg is dead. I'm asking you to forgive me. All these days you've been giving me the business and the business is going down. 
it was me who was doing it. It was not to do with the business. And the guy was shocked, but he was afraid. He was, he was, he wanted to keep his distance. But he said, I repented and I asked Allah to forgive me with this. And he says, every time people come, I raise the price for them because I had so much hazard. I was envying you why you have everything but I don't have. You've never studied, I've studied, but I don't have anything. So I've asked Allah to forgive me and I need you to forgive me, please. The guy forgive me and they stayed away from each other. I repeat now, this is a advice to the believing men and women. Remember, whoever is out there wants to do evil, it will go back to him. It will go back to him. Whoever there, whoever there, even if that person prays five times Allah, it will go back to him and haunt him for the rest of his life. You make sure you believe in men or women, connect yourself towards Allah. And Allah will save you no matter what. You may end up in a trial here and there, but Allah will save you. Stay tuned for more of these stories of Abu Sihr, Abu Yahya, from the Ruqa Talk, wa akhiru da'wana, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.